You can't mark a date and believe that that day you can turn it on. It's not about the date. It's about the commitment to yourself. It's about dating your purpose. It's about marrying yourself to your goals. It's about realizing that there is no one coming to save you but you. You have to be willing to put in the work. You must be willing to walk into success. You must be able to run past doubt. You must be able to go through the barbed wire of self-doubt and deprecating words that you have placed over yourself and tried to play it off like it was a joke when in reality, you truly believe that you don't deserve things. It's time now for you to speak life over yourself. Losing. Most of you hear losing and it makes you cringe. It makes you afraid. You, you, you fear being embarrassed. You fear being judged. You fear looking like an idiot in front of a bunch of people that won't matter to you in five years. But here's the thing. Being willing to fail, being willing to lose, will create such a competitive advantage for you because most people can't do it. Most people can't be seen falling on their face. So our options are to stay the same or to actually be willing to fail. This is your time. You have greatness in you and everything that happens to you. I've come to know some things happen to you. Some things happen for you. And that is what I do. And that is what you can do too. If you have something to change, if you want to change something, change it. Change it now. People who are serious are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People that are serious don't spend time feeling sorry for themselves or talking about what happened. They are too busy creating a new life for themselves. Go after your dreams, right? Go after them. I never compromised that. I never allowed anybody to tell me what I was capable of accomplishing. I never let anybody tell me that I can't do. Right? I went after it. If you want to accomplish something or do something that a lot of people think is difficult to accomplish, you have to put all your eggs in one basket. There's no compromise. It's time for you to believe that there is greatness on the inside and that you were born to be someone and that everyone that sees you sees a reflection of a, per a work in progress, but the progress is coming because you're putting in the work. Stop looking over your shoulder wondering if someone's coming back or if someone's going to pass me. There is absolutely no one that can take opportunities that were made and handcrafted by God for you. All you have to do is be obedient. All you have to do is weather the storm. All you have to do is keep going. All you have to do is keep progressing. All you have to do is keep pursuing. And no matter what comes against you, it will end up working for your good. But I want to tell you that these things that are coming against you will work for you. These things that are trying to intend harm and bad in your life will work out for your good. So I say, take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Get control of your ego. Don't hide your delicate pride from the truth. Take ownership of everything in your world, the good and the bad. Take ownership of your mistakes, take ownership of your shortfalls, take ownership of your problems, and then take ownership of the solutions that will get those problems solved. 
See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes, courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. You will be so miserable, you will catch so much hell, you say, yes, I will do it. What do you want me to do? Take me. A real man in the dark, when nobody's watching, he putting in work. A real man, when coach ain't even watching, he's studying film on his own, because he loves the process. If you will be a champion, if you will be a beast, you're going to have to go through something. Ain't nobody gonna hand you nothing. Ain't nobody gonna hand you no championship. Ain't nobody gonna hand you no title. But you have to keep going. You have to keep pushing. You have to allow adversity to grow you, to change you, to strengthen you, not to break you, not to break you. I've seen so many of us give permission to those that didn't create us and we allow them to control us. Take ownership of your job, of your team, of your future, and take ownership of your life. And lead, lead, lead yourself and your team and the people in your life. Lead them all to victory. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred with dust, blood, sweat, and tears. Not to those cold and timid souls in the stands who know neither victory nor defeat. You made it through, because you're here. You made it through. And the things that you made it through is preparing you for what's meant for you. Everything that you went through, it made it through. I'm sure you can think right now, all the times when you felt like, man, my life is over, my story is done. But you made it through it. Everything that you went through and made it through is preparing you, was preparing you for what was meant for you. When you have a dream, the one thing you have to watch out for are those out there that are trying to crush your dream. And you cannot allow that to happen. That is your biggest challenge. So I challenge you to have your dream, go after it with all you have, be legendary in your own right. Everybody listening to this, one of the biggest freaking problems with you is the way you think about yourself. That's one of your biggest freaking problems. That's why you can't achieve what you want to achieve. Let me tell you what we are. Let me tell you how we believe about ourselves. We believe and we know that we are simply common humans with an uncommon desire to succeed. And how do you build an uncommon desire to succeed? That has got to be forged by adversity. And the things that are controlling you, they might seem good. They might be made of gold. But they are enslaving you nonetheless. Do not let that happen. Cast off those mental manacles and think for yourself. You've got to put in the work when no one else is watching. You have to convince yourself that the things that are in your head, the self-doubt that has been imposed because of lives and small setbacks are temporary. But the results you leave are permanent. Don't allow the setbacks you once had be the thing that keep you from going after your goals. Set those goals higher. Stop looking for validation from the outside and start believing on the inside that if I got up this morning, it's because God had a plan for me and I need to fulfill it. Ignore and outperform them. You see, while you're over there watching me and talking about me, I'm working. I'm working hard. I'm taking things to the next level. 
You keep gossiping and I'll keep working. You keep talking smack and I'll keep working. You keep focusing on everything and everyone else and I'll keep working. And when you finally look around at where you are and where I'm at, you realize that you have nothing left to talk smack about. And you will lose and I will win. You need to continue to chase that opportunity to become the best version of you. And the best version of you can only come through trial and tribulation. Speak up. Keep talking about what you are. Stop feeling like you have to be humble enough that you can't tell people that there is something about you that you feel like is so unique that you have to give birth to these gifts, these talents, these opportunity. Because when you speak up, you open up the door of opportunity for others. We can make a difference. You can help someone. You can teach someone. You can inspire someone. You can make your part of the world a little bit better. Don't you dare give up because when you give up, right, when you give up, the lives that you were meant to reach and touch and the things that you were meant to do gets cut off. The gifts that you were meant to give to the world, the talents that are inside of you, they die with you. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. A lot of us plan to be strong, but we're not, we don't want to go through the moments where we have to actually become strong and go through the tension, go through the hard times. And I'm not saying you got to go through hard times on purpose, but I want to let you know that your story is far from finished. Don't let this moment, don't let this season, don't let this time, don't let this chapter become your life. Let it be a part of your story, not your story. Let it be a part of it. Let it be a testimony of what you overcame. Let it be a testimony of how God brought you through, brought you out of. There is more to your life. Y'all gotta start loving your life. Be comfortable on who you are. If you come from a family right now that's broke, you got to your advantage. I, I love dealing with a dude who think because he come from money, he better than me. Let's go, <laughs> let's go. You got money, but do you got that dog? Yeah, you got money, you got print, but do you got that dog? Do you got that stamina? So yeah, you might have some I don't have right now, but if I work hard, I can have what you have. I will never quit. Because if you quit, you're done. You may still be alive walking around in this earth. You're done. I will never quit. I will persevere and I will thrive on adversity. I will be physically harder and mentally stronger than anything that comes against me, my family, my business, my brothers, my sisters, my team. I will be the one that is physically harder and mentally stronger and I will work to maintain that position. You won't beat me. If knocked down, I will get back up every single time. When you make yourself better, you make the world better. Always keep going. And always stay focused. Because that's... That's the mentality that you have to have, is that it's never finished. It is never finished. If you want to be great, you're going to have to learn to evaluate yourself with integrity. To look at yourself and realize that there are cracks in your armor. And you can feel those cracks. Am I out of balance when it comes to my work, my marriage, my family, my service? Are you able to identify the areas where you've made mistakes or where you've been shortchanging yourself and others? Because if you can do that, 
You can fix the cracks. When you quit, your mind does this. When you quit, your mind says we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say f you, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says f He's not leaving. You do get to write the script of your life, but you have to write around the things that don't go the way you want them to. But don't let that stop you. Instead, take ownership and counterattack those things that aren't going the way you want them to by going out every day and getting after it. You better grow up and get to the point as a man that if you ever get beat, you better get beat by somebody that's just that's just purely more talented than you are. You better not ever get beat by somebody because you beat yourself. You have to take advantage of an opportunity of a lifetime in the lifetime of the opportunity. So we gotta expand. We gotta grow. We gotta figure this fucking thing out. So then these compartments in your brain, they have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. When you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not gonna quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to but then it becomes used to it. And I don't think that it's optional for us to sit on what we have. See, if you're sitting on what you have, what you've been given, and I think everybody's been given something to bring to the planet, that only you can do that, only you can perform that, only you can initiate that activity. And if you don't do that, if you're not filling in your life with your life work or your mission, then there are gaps in your life. And what we do when we're not living out our true identity, we begin to fill the gaps, we fill the holes with garbage. If you don't face reality, you can't fix it. If you don't face your past, you can't learn from it. All things are possible. All things are possible literally means all things are possible. So whatever, whatever it is you'd like to attract into your life, whatever you'd like to accomplish, whatever you'd like to do in your life, if you start from a spiritual place, a place of all things are possible, if I return you know, and get to that place, mm -hmm. and then I begin to visualize it, and I begin to use my imagination, because everything that we see around us, everything in this world, was once imagined. If you can learn how important your imagination is, and that's where your spirit is, in that place, mm -hmm. and then once you go to that place, in, in what it is you'd like to attract into your life, you're coming from a spiritual place, absolutely nothing is impossible. And we can thrive under the difficult conditions that make up our lives, and we can resist the malevolence that entices us. That's within our power, and we don't know the limits to that. And we also know that it's better to, we all know this, that it's better to live courageously than cowardly. Everyone knows that. We know that you should pick up your damn responsibility and move forward. Everyone knows that. It's, it's part of our intrinsic moral nature. You could be in the best place and be absolutely miserable. You can live in a palace and be horrendously miserable. You can live on the street and be exuberantly joyful. Both are possible. So your experience of life is where your destiny is because it's your experience of life that determines the quality of your life. Not where you are, where you're going, what you're doing. No, these things are only socially relevant. They are not existentially relevant. Existentially for you as you sit here, what is your experience of life? How profound is it? How pleasant is it? How wonderful is it? This is all that determines. This destiny 100% you can take charge of. This because human experience is caused from within. Pain and pleasure, joy and misery, agony and ecstasy happens from within us. 
So when it is happening from within us, at least what is happening from within us must happen my way. Everyone knows that you wake up at three in the morning when you've left, let your life go off the rails and that you berate yourself for your uselessness and your cruelty and your failure to take off to take the opportunities that are in front of you. And if you were the master in your own house, in some sense, the captain of your own destiny, if there was no intrinsic nature, well, that would never happen. You'd just let yourself off the hook. There'd be no voice of conscience tormenting you. You have to lose your fear of failure. Failure is a part of the process. People who never fail, never try. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. Sharpen your sword. And by that, I mean your body, your mind, your spirit, and then go out there into the world and slay those dragons. The distress that we carry with us about things that happen externally to us during our development, during our youth, during our moments of vulnerability, we have to be willing to let go of it so that we can grow through it. We have to be willing to let go so that we can become but a lot of us, what we do is we live our life on repeat. We spend time, right, living our life on repeat. We spend time in the same mess. We spend time in the same situation. We spend time in the same stress. And we spend our life like that, right? We want change. We want to do better. We want all these things. But we're continuing to spend time on things that move us further away from it. Evil does exist, and it's out there. It's a mob. It is a frenzy. It is pent up frustration and anger. It is jealousy, and it is envy, and it is resentment, and it is out there. And it is also in all of us. And it is up to all of us to fight it. You can only have two things in life, reasons or results. Notice, reasons don't count. Folks will always point out reasons on why they are not living their dream, on why they are not manifesting their greatness. They will always be able to point those things out, but none of those things count. The only thing that counts are results. And results don't lie, ladies and gentlemen. They tell it all. Judge a tree by the fruit that it bears, not the ones that it might talk about, not the ones that it might wish for, or think about, or affirm about, but the fruit that it actually bears. Because the truth is, and most people don't want to hear this, but it's the truth. Ain't nothing going to change until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Ain't nothing going to change until you say, you know what? I'm not repeating this another day in my life. I'm not going to be the same person I was yesterday. Life is not perfect. And it isn't going to be easy but it is all you've got. So make it a good run. And 
and make sure you enjoy the jam. And you do that by getting out there every day and getting after it. I don't think that as a participant in life, you cannot be committed. You're either committed to mediocrity or you're committed to greatness. You're either committed to being productive or you're committed to being non-productive. You're committed to being happy or you're committed to being unhappy. See, whatever you're doing, however you spend your time, that tells you who you are. You have to be willing to let go of the thing that wants to hold you prisoner. Most of us have stayed in the jail cell of a mental prison long beyond the years of our sentence. Because our thing is, we have only known the pain. And we have fear that pleasure will never be something you can possess. But your fear must come in conflict with your faith. Your faith is that you can become more because you have deserved better. And that the thing that came against you is not greater than the thing that is inside you. Don't give up. Don't let the world get you down. When it does get you down, get up and write what you want out of your life and don't fucking stop. You know what I'm saying? You get up every fucking day, you look in the mirror, you tell that mirror, I'm a bad motherfucker. How to turn nothing into something. First, to turn nothing into something, you start with ideas and imagination. Things change, things happen, people get sick, people get hurt. We lose our jobs, we lose our loved ones. Anything and everything can change in one day. And when it does, don't get caught back on your heels. Instead, go forward, go on the attack and continue to fight. I'm gonna take ownership over my freaking life and I'm gonna stop living like that. Because the truth of the matter is, a lot of us, we living like we got time, man. You don't have time. Stop living like that. You don't have time. You can't stop time. The sun is gonna keep rising. It's gonna keep rising. The moon's gonna keep coming up. It's gonna keep rising over and over and over again. I realize that the things that you experience in life are making you bigger and better and stronger and faster and wiser. So you become something by dealing with the thing that tried to destroy you. It is not about holding on. It's about letting go so that you can grow. It's an interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen, that when we put ourselves in a situation where we say we're going to do it, it, it puts you in another zone where the universe responds to you when you have that kind of consciousness. See, the universe responds to the man or woman that refuses to be denied because that is your commitment. It isn't going to knock on your door. You have to kick that door in. You have to make things happen. You have to initiate action. And you do that by going out there every day and getting after it.